What's going on, gardeners? It is Sunday, June 12th, and the full humidity is here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, but that's okay. We are out gardening in it anyway. And today, I wanna to share with you all four tips that your corn will absolutely love you for in order to get the biggest, fullest, juiciest, sweetest ears of corn possible in your backyard garden. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. I've been trying to grow sweet corn in my garden for several years here and every single year up to this point, I have failed. My corn ears have not developed properly and I have not had a single proper corn harvest up to this point. However, that has all changed this year. I have been researching really hard to try and figure out the things I was doing wrong and I finally figured out how to grow sweet corn properly in my backyard garden. So I want to take you through and explain to you all what I was doing wrong and show you exactly what changes I made that I can now have success growing corn in my garden. And the first tip is to apply a thick mulch layer at the base of all of your corn plants. And that is because corn requires far more water than most things we're used to growing in our garden. Have you ever seen those giant water cannons that they put out in cornfields in order to blast huge amounts of water all over their crops? Well, corn really has a high water demand. And despite how much rain we get here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, you can hear thunder booming behind me as we speak, it's still not enough because I wasn't mulching my crop enough and most of the, uh, the, the rain that we would get would evaporate in the heat of the sun. So this year, I made sure to put a three inch thick layer of hardwood bark mulch on the tops of all of my raised beds in order to lock in that moisture. And I think that has made a tremendous amount of difference. It is keeping the soil evenly moist, preventing the evaporation, and the corn is much happier as a result. Now, if you don't have a source of all natural shredded hardwood bark mulch like I do, you can use seed free uh, or weed free grass clippings. You can use wheat straw, you can use hay, you can use pine bark nuggets, just make sure it is a natural mulch source. You could even use uh, chopped up leaves if you have them. Just don't use those dyed mulches because they're usually ground up pallets with fake dyes added to them. And don't use things like synthetic rubber mulch. You want a natural mulch because it will break down and add organic matter to your soil over time. The second tip that I'm going to give you for growing the best corn possible in your backyard garden is to add drip irrigation. This year I made sure to run drip lines to all of my beds that have corn in it and it has not only saved me a tremendous amount of time uh, when it comes to uh, actually watering the plants but it does a much better job at deeply watering the plants. So what I use is off of the main distribution line I punch a hole and I run this quarter inch poly tubing that has uh, drip emitters every 12 inches laser drilled into them. And I'll make sure to link to a video above for how to install drip irrigation to raised beds. I have a full tutorial on that, as well as I will place in the video description a link to my Drip Depot storefront in case you need to purchase any of the equipment. But if you haven't installed drip irrigation to your raised garden beds, it is a huge time saver and also a big money saver because drip irrigation is so much more efficient than overhead watering means. So I think this has made a big difference building on the water needs of the corn plants. They need a ton of water and the drip irrigation does a great job at, at watering very deeply, which is hugely advantageous when growing corn. The third tip when it comes to growing the best possible sweet corn in your backyard garden is to make absolutely certain that you fertilize your corn adequately. This was my biggest failure because I was fertilizing my corn similar to how I fertilize things like tomatoes and peppers about every other week or so. But corn requires absolutely ridiculously enormous amounts of nitrogen. They are probably the heaviest feeders that you will ever grow in your garden. And if you do not give them enough nutrients, they will not grow adequately. Now, there is a reason why you almost never find organic 
corn. And that is because in order to grow corn, generally speaking, especially the new varieties of corn, you have to give them huge amounts of nitrogen and you just really can't do that organically. You have to add soluble fertilizers in order to grow them for that quick jolt of nitrogen that they need. And that is because corn has been selectively bred above and beyond what we're used to growing. Now, when I say selectively bred, I do not mean genetically modified. You cannot buy genetically modified seeds. All of the seed packets that we buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or on seed websites, uh, they are not genetically modified. Genetically modified products are tightly controlled intellectual property. You need to sign enormous contracts and closely guard this stuff in order to buy GMO products. You're not getting GMO products on the shelf. So don't worry, the corn seed you are getting is not not genetically modified. What selective breeding is, is it's the act of gardeners and scientists every single year saving seeds from the best fruits or the best ears of corn because they were the best fruits, they were the best products, we want to save the absolute best seed. Over generations and generations, fruit quality gets sweeter, the kernels or whatever fruit you're growing will get larger and higher quality. Then those farmers or scientists will take those selectively saved seeds and they will often cross them uh, to get more genetic diversity and then you can get even more productive plants with more disease resistance and sometimes higher sugar content. And because corn is one of the staple foods of the entire planet that so much of us subsist on, they get far more funding to develop than than pretty much anything else sans maybe wheat. So a ton of money is spent on developing corn products. And because of that, we have just accelerated their, their development so much that they just require more than what nature alone can give them. So that's why you rarely see organic corn. And when you do see organic corn, they're generally growing those old heirloom strains of maize that don't require the extreme fertilizing schedules that modern sweet corn has. Now, if you want to grow the best sweet corn possible, you'll want to use soluble fertilizers like this 202020 Jack's product right here that I love using, or you can just buy miracle Grow All-Purpose 24816. It's also suitable for growing corn. You want products that have generous amounts of nitrogen and are fairly well balanced. Now, I know many of you are against using products like these, but they're naturally derived. They are not synthetic. They are synthesized. They are simply processed by labs, so they are immediately bioavailable and usable by those plants. They're not some artificial product per se. And when you use them as directed in the quantities that are specified, they will not harm your soil and they will not harm the soil life. So don't fear these when used as directed. Now, if you absolutely must grow your corn 100% organically, you're going to probably want to grow older strains of corn or your heirloom type corns that don't have quite the high fertilizing demand. And in order to add adequate nitrogen, you're going to want to use things like fish emulsion, which is high in nitrogen at a rate of 511, and also things like blood meal. Uh, this specific blood meal is 1200. So it's very high nitrogen and blood meal tends to break down pretty quickly. Although it's not immediately bioavailable, the soil microbiology processes it pretty quickly. And your fish emulsion is soluble. Uh, it's already been broken down by fermentation. So this is something that you can use to immediately feed the plants. And it is a, an immediately bioavailable soluble fertilizer. These two products will help you grow better sweet corn. And the fourth tip is probably the most important tip of all, and that is to hand pollinate your corn. In order to have a full ear of corn, every single individual kernel on that ear of corn needs to be pollinated. If not, you will have gaps and missing kernels on your ear of corn. Now in giant commercial corn fields, natural full pollination is pretty simple. However, in small backyard plots like mine, Full pollination is almost impossible to occur reliably with purely natural means. And in order to understand why, I'm going to explain to you how corn pollination works. Corn is a self-fertile plant producing both male and female parts. The male flowers are located at the tops of the plants and are called tassels. As the tassel ripens, pollen is shed. The female parts are located on the lower parts of the plant. The female flowers are the silks. Each individual silk strand is connected to one kernel of corn. 
In order to have a full ear of corn, each individual silk must be pollinated. Full pollination occurs when male pollen touches each individual strand of silk. Seeing the layout of a stalk of corn, you'd think pollination would be easy and male pollen would simply rain down on top of the silks. However, corn is actually wind pollinated and wind does not blow down, it blows across. Actual data shows 97% of an ear's pollination comes from other plants. This is simple in large cornfields because winds blow giant clouds of pollen across the entire field, resulting in great pollination. In backyard plots, this phenomenon doesn't occur and pollen can actually blow in the wrong direction. So small corn patches like mine often have poor ear development with kernels missing from poor pollination. In order to pollinate corn efficiently in small gardens, wait until the silks emerge. Then wait for perfectly dry weather with no rain or morning dew and light or calm winds. Then either shake the tassels to distribute pollen all over the silks or snap a few of the tassels off and use them as feather dusters to spread pollen on the silks. So as soon as you start to see these silks start to emerge, simply take the pollen rich tassels and start wiping them all over the silks as they emerge. And while it seems like this extra step may be a little bit of a pain, it only takes a few minutes and it's necessary if you want to ensure that all of your ears of corn are fully developed. Now you may be thinking, how do I know that these tips actually work? Well, it is Saturday, July 2nd, and I am about to pick my first ever ear of corn from my backyard garden. This ear of corn right here is literally three tries in the making, and I'm so excited. And look at this, this is my first ever ear of corn. And it's pretty normal that when you grow your own ears of corn organically, you're going to get a little bit of damage from bugs right here. Uh, that's to be expected um, because this was grown organically. However, that tip can easily be cut off. If you ever looked at the pre-cut ears of corn at the grocery store, they usually lop off the tip because there's usually damage on them. But look at that. That is a nearly perfect ear of corn, bi-colored. And I'm so excited. I think I'm actually going to get to eat this for dinner. Here's another ear of corn right here. Let's see how this one looks. And look at this one. This one is, is worm damage free. There is no pest damage at all on this. This is truly the perfect ear of organically grown backyard corn. I don't know what else I could possibly expect from this. Beautiful, bicolor, amazing. So this should prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that these tips do work. And after three tries, I finally nailed it. And thanks to those four tips, I have finally had success growing sweet corn in my backyard garden for the first time ever. And I am very confident that if you employ these techniques into your garden, you will have success growing sweet corn too. So everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use for real in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront link down in the video description and while you're there check out my spread shop link for custom merch if you want to support the channel thank you all so much for watching and i hope to see all of you again on the next video all right buddy we're going to show everybody what a good athlete you are this is going to be great ready ha that was amazing what a catch that was great buddy that was so good damn that was so good that was such a good catch you can catch so well for a hound dog. You know, most hound dogs can't catch. At least I think so. You're really the only one I know really well. Let's try again. Let's, uh, let's see again. Dale. Ready, buddy? And catch. Oh, see, this is the other problem with a hound dog. When they decide they're done playing, they are done playing. He is very independent.